Feeling my way through the darkness Guided by a beating heart I can't tell where the journey will end On March 18, 1837, in Caldwell, New Jersey, Stephen Grover Cleveland was born to parents Richard Fally Cleveland and Anne Neal Cleveland. Cleveland was the fifth of nine children. In 1841, the Cleveland family moved to Fayetteville, New York, where Grover spent most of his childhood. In 1853, Grover's father took a job in Holland Patton, New York, so they moved there. Unfortunately, not very long after, Cleveland's father died. Cleveland received his elementary education at the Fayetteville Academy and the Clinton Liberal Academy. Cleveland's brother, William, was hired as a teacher at the New York Institute for the Blind in New York City, and William gave Grover a job as an assistant teacher. In 1855, he decided to move west. He stopped first in Buffalo, New York, where his uncle, Lewis Allen, gave him a clerical job. Allen was an important man in Buffalo, and he introduced Grover to influential men there, including the partners in the law firm of Rogers, Bowen, and Rogers. Cleveland later took a clerkship with the firm, began to read the law, and was admitted to the Bar Association, a professional body of lawyers, in 1859. Grover Cleveland was the only president to be in office two non-consecutive terms. He was the 22nd president and the 24th president. He served as the 22nd president his first term from 1885 to 1889, and as the 24th president his second term from 1893 to 1897. Cleveland was a Democrat. The Presidential Succession Act of 1886 was the act that declared if the president and vice president were both absent, heads of the executive departments would succeed to the presidency, an order in which the departments were created, starting with the Secretary of State. This act remained in force until 1947. The dedication of the Statue of Liberty happened in 1886. It was a gift from France. Interstate Commerce Act of 1887 created the Interstate Commerce Commission, the first true federal regulatory agency. It was designed to address the issues of railroad abuse and discrimination. The Dawes Severality Act of 1887 declared the Indians shared share of land. It emphasized the treatment of Native Americans as individuals rather than members of tribes. The Panic of 1893 was a severe economic depression. Despite the suffering of the unemployed, Cleveland stayed true to his hands-off government policy and would not interfere. The Pullman strike of 1894 was when Pullman railroad workers went on strike over a pay cut, interfering with the delivery of the U.S. mail. Cleveland sent in federal troops to break it up. Cleveland's first vice president was Adelaide Stevenson I. He served from March 4, 1893 till March 4, 1897. He was born on October 23, 1835. Before he was vice president, he served as a congressman in Illinois. After appointed as v assistant postmaster general of the United States, he fired many Republican postal workers and replaced them with Southern Democrats. Adelaide Stevenson enjoyed his role as vice president. He was applauded for ruling in a nobly nonpartisan manner. Thomas Hendricks served as Grover Cleveland's vice president during his second term. He was born on September 7, 1819 and died on November 25, 1885. He served as vice president from March 4, 1885 until his death. After he passed away, Cleveland did not have a vice president. Hendricks was a lawyer and an American politician from Indiana who served as the 16th governor of Indiana. Hendricks represented Indiana in the U.S. House of Representatives in 1851 to 1855 and the U.S. Senate in 1863 to 1869. In 1872, on his third attempt to become governor, Hendricks defeated General Thomas M. Brown and became the first Democratic governor to be elected in a northern state after the American Civil War. Hendricks grew in popularity within the National Democratic Party. During his first term, Cleveland successfully nominated two justices to the Supreme Court of the United States. 
When William Burnham Woods died, Cleveland nominated Lucius Q.C. Lamar to his seat in late 1887. Lamar was a former Mississippi senator who served in Cleveland's cabinet as Interior Secretary. Chief Justice Morrison Waite died a few months later and Cleveland nominated Melville Fuller to fill his seat on April 30, 1888. Cleveland nominated 41 lower federal court judges in addition to his four Supreme Court justices. This included two judges to the United States Circuit Courts, nine judges to the United States Courts of Appeals, and 30 judges to the United States District Courts. Because Cleveland served terms both before and after Congress eliminated the Circuit Courts in favor of the Courts of Appeals, he is one of only two presidents to have appointed judges to both bodies. All of Cleveland's appointments to the Circuit Courts were made in his first term, and all of his appointments to the Courts of Appeals were made in his second. Cleveland and his aides lied about a sex scandal to save his campaign. Grover Cleveland sexually assaulted a woman by use of force and violence. A few weeks later, she found out that she was pregnant. His most controversial action was his interference in a boundary dispute between Venezuela and Britain. Cleveland was also very inconsistent in his attitude towards racial issues. Cleveland regarded African Americans as social and political equals. He thought it would be best if Native Americans mixed together into white society. Cleveland never supported women's rights to vote. In foreign policy, Cleveland opposed territorial expansion and intertwining alliances. Cleveland also believed that U.S. sugar planters had plotted in the Hawaiian Revolution. He also claimed that the British were violating the Monroe Doctrine. Cleveland threatened London with war. Grover Cleveland married Frances Folsom in 1886, being the first president to be married in the White House. Although she was almost 30 years younger than him, they were very happy together. Together, they had five children, Ruth, Esther, Marianne, Richard, and Frances. After Grover Cleveland was president, he moved to Princeton, New Jersey. He became a trustee of the Princeton University and began writing essays and political commentary. He also wrote his book, Presidential Problems, in 1904. Grover Cleveland died as he had lived, determined to be in control. He died of gastrointestinal disease, complicated by minor problems with his heart and kidneys. Cleveland suffered great pain in the spring of 1908. Historians tend to see Cleveland's presidency as an essential preface to the emergence of the modern presidency that began with Theodore Roosevelt. Grover Cleveland was one of the hardest working presidents.